Hi friends. Now continuing with the unplugged series that we do on Damsiri channel on YouTube and on Damsiri page on Facebook, where we add integrated videos on common diseases or common questions that can be asked in your exams. Today we have chosen a very very interesting and a very beautiful sign, and it has a very typical radiological appearance. And in microbiology also, it's a very typical organism. So I, I'm, I'm sure you will like it. I am Dr. Sumer Sethi. I am the radiologist who is going to discuss this case. And I, am, I have with me Dr. Mamta Java, microbiologist, who is going to discuss the cave case with you. And I'm sure you will enjoy the finding. Okay. So let's look at the history. A 24-year-old male presented to surgery OPD in, our, you know, in Delhi who has swelling of scrotum, gradual and onset, cystic to palpate, painless, no skin changes, and an ultrasound of scrotum was advised to me. So we, we let's look at the ultrasound imaging. It's very common to have a scrotal swelling, and you know, to get a. Uh, it's very common to advise ultrasound scrotum for this, and we use a high frequency ultrasound probe so that we can get good resolution of the testes and the surrounding area. Let's look at the ultrasound finding here. So on the ultrasound image, we can see an anechoic area, a dark area, and when we actually move the ultrasound probe around, I can see some hyperechoic loop, trilling like movement of the worms and can you see that this is what is called as the filarial dance sign filarial dance sign which is very typical of scrotal filariasis there is no other differential diagnosis on this ultrasound image now I'll ask Mamta to talk about you know this so what actually happens here is it is a dilated lymphatic which was looking anechoic and you could see the nematodes moving around in that twirling motion that is called as the filarial dance sign and that is the beauty that you can actually see it on an ultrasound while doing ultrasound and you can easily tell that this is filariasis so I'd ask Dr. Mamda to talk about the yeah. microbiological aspect of the disease. Oh, thank you, sir. Hello, everybody. Uh, as you all know, we can uh, broadly uh, classify parasites into protozoa and helminths. And under helminths, we have got uh, nematodes. Uh, nematodes are basically roundworms, and you can classify them as intestinal nematodes and tissue nematodes based on where the adult worm is residing. So, what uh, Sir was talking about, uh, the filarial dance sign, that is typical of Vucheraria bancrofti, which is a filarial worm, uh, which is a tissue nematode. So, basically, in India, 95% of the cases of filariasis are attributed to Vucheraria bancrofti and 5% are attributed to Brugia malai. Now, this particular patient presented with scrotal swelling and it's very, very important uh, to remember that uh, scrotal involvement is very, very uncommon in case of Brugia malai, where it, whereas it is very common in case of Vucheraria bancrofti. Now, uh, as a rule, all the tissue nematodes are viviparous, that is larva laying. So, how do we get infection? Uh, we actually require the bite of a vector in this case and the vector in case of Vucheraria bancrofti is Culex fatigans. When this mosquito bites, it deposits the infective larvae, that is the L3 larvae on the skin. The larvae subsequently penetrate the skin and ultimately reach the lymphatic vessels. Now, the home of these uh, worms uh, are the uh, lymph nodes and the lymphatic vessels, primarily the lymphatic vessels. The larvae will give rise to adults. Adults will undergo fertilization and again the female worms being viviparous, they, they will produce larvae which being very very small in size are known as microfilariae. Now these microfilariae are discharged in the circulatory system and at this point of time when some other mosquito vector bites this particular person, that mosquito along with the blood meal takes up the microfilariae then subsequently the microfilaria undergoes development in the mosquito and, and in a few days the mosquito becomes competent enough to transmit the infection to another in innocent individual once the infective larvae are formed. So this is known as cyclodevelopmental kind of life cycle in contrast to malaria which is cyclopropagative. So basically in this case, in case of filariasis, there is only morphological transformation from one thing to another. Whereas in malaria, we are getting multiplication of uh, different forms also and morphogenesis also meaning conversion of one particular morphological form into another. Now, uh, the clinical features in this case are not because of microfilaria, they are because of the adult worms which stay in the lymphatic vessels. See, nobody likes in, uh, intrusion, nobody likes foreign organisms. So, same is the case with human body. Whenever the lymphatic vessels lodge these adult worms, these adult worms elicit inflammation, which is a kind of primary immune response. So, repeated attacks of inflammation will lead to ultimately fibrosis of the lymphatic vessels so ultimately lymph lymphangitis will be followed by 
fibrosis of the lymphatic vessels and eventually the lumen will be blocked the vessel uh, will be swollen up that is lymphangio lymphangiovarix will form and this swollen uh, uh, lymph uh, lymphatic vessel is then prone to rupture and that and is what we saw on the ultrasound we saw the dilated lymphatic with exactly the, uh, parasite. And as you all know, lymph is highly, uh, it's, it's a highly nutritious fluid. Whatever it comes in contact with, it induces hypertrophy and hyperplasia. And uh, scrotal sac is no exception. Uh, it, the lymph can deposit in, in, in any sac, like it can deposit in the pleural cavity leading to chylus uh, effusion. It can lead, it can lead on to, it can be deposited in the abdominal cavity leading to chylus ascites. And uh, scrotal swelling we are just uh, discussing uh, with you. And uh, again, I would emphasize the fact that Brugia malai is not associated with genital filariasis. Okay. And uh, anything about the morphology that you would like to add here? Yes, sir, definitely. Uh, it's important to keep in mind this particular picture of microfilaria because this is what we look for in the peripheral blood smear. Now, microfilaria of Bucheraria bancrofti show nocturnal periodicity, meaning they will jump into the circulation between 10 p.m. at night to 2 a.m. So ideally the patient's blood should be collected at night but we have got better methods today uh, to collect the blood uh, that is the DEC provo provocation test wherein the patient is given an oral dose of DEC which induces these microfilaria to jump into the circulation during the daytime so that we can collect the blood in the daytime. Now if you carefully look at this picture microfilaria of Vucheraria bancrofti is sheathed and most importantly, the tail tip does not have any nuclei as you can clearly appreciate in this particular picture and on the right hand side is the actual picture of this worm. And one more important thing, we do not expect microfilaria in the circulation in the later stages of disease because for microfilaria to be discharged into the circulatory system from the lymphatic vessels, it's important that lymphatic vessels are patent and patency is lost in later stages of the disease on account of repeated fibrosis which is happening because of repeated lymphangitis. Any, any note on the treatment you would like to make? Uh, sir, DC is given in areas of endemic, uh, of endemicity, uh, so that uh, because repeated infections will lead to, uh, you know, involvement of uh, legs and um, uh, legs, genitals, uh, pleural cavity and uh, abdominal cavity. And uh, sadly, once, uh, you know, this, this uh, manifestation occurs, meaning elephantiasis, uh, it is irreversible. So then it, uh, nothing can be, can be done. So I hope you could understand the life cycle of the uh, nematode as well as the morphology as well as the radiological picture. As far as radiology is concerned, the MCQ that I feel they can ask you in the exams will probably they will say filarial dance sign is seen in or the ultrasound scrotal dance sign. Dance sign is typical of filariasis in scrotum. Is. So once you see the dance word, I hope it comes back to you in the exam. And I hope you enjoy this episode of Unplugged. And in Unplugged, we our goal is to integrate a clinical scenario with the you know parasitic and with the microbiological appearance and the radiological appearance because you have to understand radiology microbiology pathology lab sciences today are actually they work in tandem with the clinician so it's not like you know we are not uh, sitting outside the hospital somewhere else and they are doing something it's all we are working together to create the diagnosis and management in the patient life and that is what the exams today are also you know showcasing you appear for any exam, international standard exam, they will usually ask you clinical infectious disease kind of a pattern that is what we are trying to put portray. I also strongly recommend that you follow us on Dam Sally channel on YouTube for more such videos and I also recommend that you please go back and look at other unplugged videos that we have done in the past on this YouTube channel. We have also done you know a series on emergency medicine videos, we have done a series on patholo path path radio pathological correlation. Do, do look at the videos that we do and ours is probably one of the most unique channel on medical education where we try to put multiple speciality together other rather than you know bringing you uh, only one mundane fact at a time do follow us on dam channel on youtube and facebook page dam and if you enjoy it do write back on the comment section thank you